From a surprising amount of North Poles to exploring the depths of the ocean, I'm Bob from World 5 List. Join me as I take you through eight incredible facts about the Earth. Number 8. Earth's lowest known point is 7 miles below sea level. At a depth of roughly 36,000 feet, the Challenger Deep is Earth's lowest known point. Located in the Pacific Ocean at the southern end of the Marianas Trench, the Challenger Deep can be best described as a narrow slot-shaped depression at the bottom of an unusually deep trench. The first recording of its depth was made by the crew of the British Royal Navy survey ship HMS Challenger as it circumnavigated the globe between 1872 and 1876 in order to study the ocean's depths. Not coincidentally though, this is also how the Challenger Deep got its name. Only two successful manned descents have been made. On January 23rd of 1960, Jacques Picard and Don Walsh made history by being the first humans to travel into the Challenger Deep. Then in 2012, movie director James Cameron made the first ever solo descent in the deep submergence vehicle Deep Sea Challenger, which was custom built to withstand the 16,000 pounds of pressure at the bottom of the Challenger Deep. He reported seeing a few signs of life and described the environment as being isolated, lunar, and desolate. All things considered, the Challenger Deep does seem pretty uneventful, however the ability to travel nearly 7 miles beneath the ocean surface is pretty fascinating in its own right. I mean, let's be honest here, would you travel into the Challenger Deep if you were given the chance? I bet you would. Number 7. There are actually four North Poles. Now, you probably learned in science class that there are one or two North Poles, but there are actually four of them. First, there's the geographic North Pole, an affixed geographic point on our planet's axis of rotation diametrically opposed to the geographic South Pole. All of the planet's time zones and meridians intersect at this point, which is why there's no definite time there. The geographic North Pole is necessary for precise navigation. Then there's the North Dip Pole, also known as North Magnetic Pole. Its location is where the planet's geomagnetic field is perpendicular to its surface. In other words, where the Earth's magnetic force points vertically downward. Now, due to frequent magnetic changes in the Earth's core, however, the North Dip Pole is not actually a fixed location. In the past century, it's migrated northward from 71 degrees latitude to its current location at 85 degrees north. But there's also a South Dip Pole, and unlike the geographic poles, it's not actually antipodal to the North Dip Pole. There are two that are currently off by over 20 degrees latitude. When a compass does point north, it's pointing toward the North Dip Pole. So, if you position yourself at the North Dip Pole and hold your compass in a horizontal position, the needle is going to point down, spin, or point toward any magnetic clothing that you may be wearing. Now, to further complicate things, there's what's known as the geomagnetic North Pole, the northern end of the magnetic sphere surrounding Earth. Like the North Dip Pole, the geomagnetic North Pole is not a fixed location either. Throughout the past century, it's migrated from Greenland to Canada. The Aurora Borealis, also known as the Northern Lights, occurs in an oval ring that's centered around the geomagnetic North Pole. Then there's the Northern Pole of Inaccessibility, the point in the Arctic Ocean farthest away from any coastline, located just a few hundred miles from the geographic North Pole. It lies on the shifting pack of ice of Northern Arctic Ocean, and nobody's ever reached the Northern Pole of Inaccessibility. You know, because its name is the Northern Pole of Inaccessibility, though several unsuccessful attempts have actually been made. And now for a surprising one. But first, do you know how often a new species is discovered in the Amazon? Put your answer in the comments below, and the answer is coming up. Number 6. The Earth Wobbles on its Axis Now, Contrary to popular belief, the Earth doesn't exactly spin smoothly, rather it wobbles irregularly over time. 
Now, for many years, researchers were stumped by the wavering tendencies of the Earth's axis, and in 2016, scientists at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory figured out that the planet's wobbling is partially caused by droughts and periods of heavy rain in various places. Dry and wet seasons seem to be responsible for between 25 and 30 percent of the push and pull of the Earth's axis. Scientists also recently discovered that the Earth's mass is redistributed by the melting and forming of ice sheets, which also causes the polar axis to shift. In fact, most of the force pulling and pushing on the polar axis is caused by the Greenland and Antarctic ice sheets. And similarly to ice sheets, the movement of water around the world also redistributes the Earth's mass and contributes to its wobbling tendencies. Number 5. Some Greenhouse Effects Are Necessary with climate change at the forefront of a whole lot of contemporary political agendas, it's really no surprise that we've been programmed to believe that the greenhouse effect is entirely bad and unnecessary. However, in the complete absence of such a thing, the global temperature would plummet to zero degrees Fahrenheit or even negative 18 degrees Celsius, making the Earth uninhabitable to most, if not all, forms of life. Now, to give you an idea of how a small change could have a major impact, scientists believe that the global temperature during the planet's most recent ice age was only 5 degrees cooler than the current average. Now, as terrifying as it is to entertain the idea of a global temperature of negative 18 degrees Celsius, it's a problem we don't have to worry about. Unfortunately, thanks largely to the burning of fossil fuels, our planet currently faces the opposite dilemma or so science would have you believe. In fact, the warmest years of the past century have occurred within the past decade, and the global temperature is currently at its highest in a thousand years. Number 4. Humans have only explored about 5% of the Earth's oceans. And before we explore that topic, if you're new here, make sure you're subscribed so I can bring you more great videos like this one in the future. Now, 70% of the Earth is covered in water. Initially, it makes sense that a vast expanse remains largely unexplored until the extent of space exploration is taken into consideration. It turns out that space is just one of two final frontiers, the other of which is located on our very planet. As it currently stands, oceanic research is woefully behind the study of space because if planets as far back as 140 million miles away have been mapped in high definition, what exactly is holding us back from learning more about what's beneath the surface of the ocean? After all, our daily lives are more heavily impacted by Earth's oceans than they are by faraway parts of the solar system. Space research has superseded oceanic exploration for a variety of reasons, including funding, press coverage, and the private sector of innovation. In recent years, scientists have called for a thorough NASA-quality mapping of the ocean floor, and it would only cost $3 billion, which is the cost of a single Mars mission. The entire ocean floor could be mapped with that amount of money. There's also a lot to be gained from taking a closer look at the contents of the Earth's vast oceans, the deployment of sonar technology to locate the missing Malaysian Airlines airplane in 2014 resulted in the discovery of a previously unknown underwater volcanoes, ridges, and trenches. However, the future of oceanic discovery remains paradoxically up in the air as it continues to lag behind other areas of scientific research. Number 3. The Earth's crust contains enough gold to cover the planet. Humans have placed an exorbitant amount of value on gold for thousands of years, and over the past several centuries, the demand for gold has kept up with its consistently high value. Not surprisingly, though, there's a very realistic possibility that we'll actually run out of mineable gold sometime in the foreseeable future. The gold mining industry has been in decline for the past 20 years because less gold is being discovered and the existing mine reserves are shrinking. The Earth's gold supply is at no shortage. In fact, 99% of the planet's gold actually remains untouched by human hands. Within the Earth's core, there's an abundance of gold. 
large enough to cover the world in a 13-inch thick layer of it. Due to its weight, the gold then sunk into the planet's core, an estimated 1.6 quadrillion tons of it, and this profusion of gold sits 1,800 miles below the Earth's surface and at several thousand degree temperatures. Unfortunately, for those who make their living in the gold mining industry, there's no way to mine the gold out of the Earth's core just yet. Number 2. The Earth's Magnetic Poles Will Eventually Switch Earth's North Magnetic Pole will eventually swap places with its sister, the South Pole. Scientists believe that the most recent pole reversal occurred 780,000 years ago, long before the existence of humans. But we're here now, and our lives depend in many ways on the Earth's magnetic fields. The reversal of the pole is a natural part of how the Earth works and has occurred a hundred times before, but the world as we know it has yet to experience the phenomenon, which normally occurs every 200,000 to 300,000 years, and therefore it's overdue. But what would a geomagnetic reversal mean for the Earth's inhabitants? Several conflicting theories exist. Some hold that the polar flip may cause exposure to harmful ultraviolet rays, so make sure you have your sunglasses, and that animals rely on the magnetic field for navigation and they could become disoriented. Others believe that because the shift would occur gradually over thousands of years, we'd all have time to prepare, but then again, those of you watching now would also be dead. Number 1. 99% of the Earth's species are extinct Every year, somewhere between 15,000 and 18,000 previously unknown living and extinct animal species are discovered by scientists and archaeologists. Now, in answer to my question from before, on average, a new living species is discovered just about every other day in the Amazon. Not surprising for a rainforest that stretches over 4 million square miles and houses 10% of the world's known plant and animal species. Discoveries of a new dolphin and monkey species have occurred as recently as 2015. Now, despite the frequent discovery of new living species, scientists estimate that 99% of the species that ever existed on Earth are extinct. And how do they know that? Well, after factoring in the rate at which extinct species are discovered, along with the amount of fossilized species that remain undiscovered, they've reasonably concluded that the amount of Earth's living species represents only a minuscule fraction of how many once existed. Additionally, the rate at which the rainforest is being destroyed for farming has scientists concerned that species are going extinct before they even have the chance to be studied. Thanks for watching. If you have any cool facts about the Earth, go ahead and share them with me in the comments below. Remember to subscribe, and I'll see you next time on World 5 List.